The Secrets of Movies and TV Shows is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Movies and TV Shows. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of For All Mankind, where we will discuss the hidden layers and deeper meanings found in this streaming series from Apple TV+. And joining me today on the panel are Father Corey Stika. Hey, Father Corey. Howdy, Dom. And Joanne Mercer. Hey, Joanne. Hi, Dom. Folks, be sure to like The Secrets of Movies and TV Shows on Facebook, where we're at facebook.com slash starquestmedia. Retweet us on Twitter, where we're at SQPN. You can find us on Instagram at Starquest Network, and be sure to leave us comments and likes and all that sort of stuff wherever you find us. I want to tell you about another net, uh, StarQuest Network show that you're sure to enjoy called Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World. You can find it wherever fine podcasts are found or at sqpn.com slash mysterious. So I had a comment from a member of the StarQuest community recently saying, you know, you do a lot of, it's called Secrets of Movies and TV Shows. Where are the TV shows? And I looked back and said, there aren't a whole lot of those you know, <laughs> that we've done recently. So uh, we're now going to catch up on that a little bit. And uh, we're definitely going to, we, as soon as someone suggests us that, oh yeah, we got to talk about this one. This is For All Mankind. It's an Apple TV Plus series. That's been on for a few years. It was one of the. It wasn't one of the first ones that Apple TV Plus came out with, but it's one of the relatively early ones. Came up about the same time, I think, as Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, in any case, uh, let me tell you a little bit about what this show is about, and then uh, just and upfront, as always, this is a spoiler discussion. We will spoil everything that happens. Mm -hmm. So if you have not yet seen it and do not like to be spoiled, pause. Go watch all three seasons. And then 30 come episodes. Back. Yes. <laughs> like I did. Like Joanne did. That's right. So here we go. Here's what happens. In an alternate version of 1969, the Russians land on the moon before the U.S. does. This ignites a space race much greater than the real one. We follow various figures, some real historious figures, historical figures, others made up for the show over the intervening decades. Ed Baldwin and his wife, Karen, Ed's an astronaut, and then later a head of the astronaut office at NASA. Gordo and Tracy Stevens, a married astronaut couple, at least at the beginning. Uh, Ellen Wilson, an astronaut who become, eventually becomes NASA administrator and then president of the United States. Uh, Margot Madison, who becomes NASA administrator eventually. Daniel Poole, uh, an African-American female astronaut, uh, and more and more. In the series... Our move to space is heavily sped up with uh, a moon base in the 1970s, NASA becoming this economic, public, private po uh, powerhouse in the 1980s, uh, the race to Mars in the 90s. And in the meantime, the world develops a little differently with different presidents or some of the same, and the Soviet Union doesn't fall in 1989 or 93, actually, the the Berlin Wall doesn't fall in 1989. Mm -hmm. By the end of the third season, the U.S., Soviet Union, and a private company in North Korea have all <laughs> landed on Mars. That's, that one was a, a little curveball at the end of that. Uh, so, And that's where the series ends at the end of season three. Uh, season four is to come. So that's the alternate history that is being presented by the series. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of us, I think we're all old enough to have some interesting memories of the real space program. Uh, mm -hmm. Joanne, did you once tell me that you, you were a little girl watching the moon landing? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. I was, I was 10 years old watching that for nice. the first time. It, it, it was, you was glued. It was like, they're on the moon. This is great. Right. So of course, when I see this, particular at the first one i was like what <laughs> wait <laughs> right. a minute that is not how i recall this yes that is not right uh, how about you father cory what are your space memories so I'm, I'm younger i don't remember the apollo program i the only thing i know of the apollo program is un unfortunately from history uh mine was more the space shuttles and you know one of my key clear memories as a kid 
uh, was the Challenger explosion in mm. 1986. You know, I, I was, I was, that was the peak of my, I was so geeky over every mm -hmm. space shuttle launch, every, you know, I had the model of the space shuttle. I had the, uh, popular mechanics had a fold out poster of the space shuttle. I had, I had that, that on the too. wall, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff, yep. you know, it was, it was, you know, that was, that was one of my big memories. Um, and actually kind of, and as an aside, I'm kind of excited. You know, we got the Artemis mission, which got postponed on Monday is basically Apollo 2, by the way, Artemis, Apollo, yes. twin Greek gods. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and I, I actually on Monday got up early hoping that they would launch because I did not see Apollo launch, any of the Apollo missions launch, but oh, I wanted to see Artemis okay. launch. Yeah. I wanted to see the even unmanned flight to the moon. Um, mm -hmm. So it's actually kind of exciting to talk about For All Mankind now because 50 years after it happened in For All Mankind, it might actually happen in real life. Yep. Yeah, I, I was glued to the NASA channel on Monday myself. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by the time everyone hears this, the they've rescheduled for the following yes. Saturday and it will have yep. gone off. OK, yes. so uh, so for me, um, I vaguely remember the Apollo Soyuz mission. That was I have a very dim memory of that. The the in the mid 70s. I do remember Skylab mission um, emissions. Um, but for me, the space shuttle, the first space shuttle launch with John Young and uh, Robert Crippen in 1980 i think it was huge mm. made a huge impact on me it was very uh, uh formative for me um and then the challenger disaster i was a senior in high school going into uh navy rotc when i graduated because mm. i was hoping to become an astronaut and so the, when that happened it again another huge uh impact on me um and then that interregnum so to speak that that uh period of time with no space launches for several mm -hmm. years um and and now we kind of live in this golden age where you know spacex is launching a falcon rocket every five or six days i think elon musk was saying yep. um regular crew missions up and down launching from american soil multiple private companies you mentioned the artemis mission so it, it's a great time if you're a fan of space exploration manned space exploration uh and so watching this series kind of like is is a little bit of what could have been, you know, if mm -hmm. only. Um, and ironically, it's because the Soviets landed first. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah that weeks. bothers me. Yeah. Because I would hope that America would want to do this on its own. But as you get into this series and you see how Congress sort of plays a role and government plays a role mm -hmm. in this, you understand why they've probably been dormant for so long. Right. Well, and it's and that's not unhistoric un anti-historical i mean that's that's the, right. how the history of the space race began how apollo began was we have to get there before the soviets because they were already starting to you know yep. get people dogs up into orbit and we kind of did little you know pooch you know little flights up into the upper atmosphere and back down by that point right so and the the uh we saw it like actually in apollo 11 it was interesting because we uh or apollo 13 sorry the movie apollo 13 in that they depict how after Apollo 11, people kind of lost interest. It's old hat, mm -hmm. Apollo 11, Apollo 12. We've done that. What's new? Why should we bother? And, and I think having that impetus of we've got to catch up with the Ruskies in, in this story is really what pushes us in America. Mm -hmm. It kind of says something about Americans is that we respond to a challenge when we're the underdog, when we're behind, we need to mm -hmm. catch up. We can't let the other guy win. Uh, and I think that's kind of what this this story part of it is saying yeah it's unfortunate i i mean i sat through most of the apollos that went up to the moon because it was just so fascinating to to right. think we're on earth and they're somewhere else yes mm -hmm. and and that was always mind-blowing to me yes a lot of other people thought it was like oh yeah it's another thing but it was the same thing with the space shuttles until until challenger blew up mm -hmm. and that was mm -hmm. You know, now all of a sudden everybody's paying attention again. Right. No, yeah. we, these are the, what space has done for us is given us a lot of the technology that we know of today. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that and, and the more exploration we do out of ourselves, the more we're going to have, you know, this technology boom and more and more knowledge of things. Now, just look at the pictures that are right. coming yeah. back. Yep. You know, that that's incredible. Well, and then this, the, the, the series, like, you know, tells us things like 
um, when we get to the moon, they're they're mining helium three from the moon, which is an, a mm. part of an inexhaustible uh, fuel source that's replacing fossil fuels on Earth with with the attendant uh, societal mm-hmm. and economic problems that re- culminated what happens at the end of season three. Uh, but yeah. mm. the uh, but it's one of the promises is like we we could stop you know digging up our own planet, start bringing stuff out from out there, from the moon, from Mars, from the asteroids, and uh, instead of you know destroying our own environment here we can get our raw materials from out there and it's just one of those things that uh you were either you know they, there's something about looking to the heavens that has always been mm-hmm. part of the human psyche um and, and even the fact that we call it the heavens and we we used to think of it as a place where god dwells it's majestic it's amazing it's immense mm-hmm. um and i think it's important so uh, Ronald D. Moore is the uh, creator, showrunner of of this. Uh, he has his ba- his original background was in Star Trek. He worked on Star Trek: uh, The Next Generation and then Deep Space Nine. He went on to run the the reboot of Battlestar Galactica from the early two thousands mm-hmm. very successfully. And so he's he's got this series now, and he explained what the triggering for him for the writers. This didn't doesn't show up actually in the show itself, but he says that the what happened differently in the show's history than, than in ours? He says, uh, Sergei Korolev was the father of the Soviet space program. In our reality, he died during an operation in Moscow in the mid-60s, and after that, their moon program never really recovered, never pulled together. So our point of divergence is that Korolev lives, and he made their moon landing happen, which I thought was mm. kind of an interesting, mm-hmm. you know, from a creator standpoint, he, you know, this isn't important to the storytelling in the show itself, but it was important for him as a writer to to kind of note this and map it out. Um, what do you think of the the way that they've mapped out the history as it's changed, just in general? I'm amazed. It, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm absolutely amazed. And especially with all the deep fake. Oh, yeah. When I see how they're taking footage of real historical figures and actually almost putting dialogue into their mouth. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, wow, I'm never going to believe anything I see on the nightly news ever again. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do some really yeah. cool things with uh, cutaways and uh, made up uh, like uh, recreating new dialogue for them. So like, like there was a clip of Clinton talking and they cut away from the video just enough, although his voice continued to be heard, where they substituted mm-hmm. in different words after that mm-hmm. point. It was mm-hmm. just, it's very clever. It, it's very, and yeah. scary, yes. <laughs> right, but the history of it, how they've, I mean, for him to take that point, what if this guy lived? Yeah. What mm-hmm. would happen? You know, as a writer, I can see you need you need that type of a starting point to then create your alternate history. Right. Because then all these other things, because come come on, no Gerald Ford, no yep. Jimmy Carter is president. Right. Mm-hmm. Ted Kennedy you know, gets elected. Yeah. Which yeah. is the most. And, 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 and his secretary is Mary Jo Kopechny, which I thought was I sat there and I went, right. really? She survived. <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, for those in Massachusetts and surrounding area, we all know this story. We're born with this story. Um, <laughs> yep. yep. You know, so to have them just fo- keep following and they do a really good job with it. I mm-hmm. feel I see very little, you know, really oopsies. As yeah. to oh that that well, but in their universe anything's possible. Mm. Well, they they do a lot with you know of course you know politics advancing, but also technology. There's a lot of technologies. The Apple Newton succeeded, unlike yep. the real world. <laughs> and became, <laughs> it became the iPhone essentially, but in the nineties, yeah. so the eighties and nineties. Um, yeah, but, but like talking about the, the president, you know, Reagan was elected in seventy six, not eighty, right? In mm-hmm. the alternate universe, things like that. Jimmy so Carter was, was a senator, right? And not yeah. a governor. Yep. Um, and those black and those boxes, video boxes that they were using, were, wasn't that some kind of an invention or something that came out of the sixties, you know, Which, those boxes, they, the video boxes they have in their, on their desks, they're uh, on like a, a long thin stem. And I swear I've seen the, those the in, video phones. Yeah. 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 That was, yeah. And that's the sort of thing is it's like they had flat screens by the early nineties, flat screen monitors, mm-hmm. whereas we have them mm-hmm. now. And so technology they show advances very fast. They had uh, electric cars in the eighties, you know, in the, in the season two, they already had electric cars. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so let's talk a little bit about the characters that we see. So the, I'd say that our main viewpoint characters 
probably and it's it's debatable because it's a it's a large cast. But I would say Ed and Karen Baldwin are really feel to me like the viewpoint characters from the first season through the third. Um, yeah, the, everything kind of revolves around them. Yeah, mm-hmm. it seems like they have their uh, in the first season, they have their son, Shane, who dies in an accident. Uh, in the second season, they've adopted a, a little girl named Kelly from Vietnam, uh, who then becomes an astronaut. Uh, then we have uh, Margot Madison, who is starts in the first season as a very young first female uh, flight controller. Like she works in mm-hmm. mission control uh, and she'll rise to the ranks up to NASA administrator. Uh, but you also have Alita, who in the first season is an illegal immigrant from Mexico at, at 12 yeah. years old, I think she is, who um, catches Margot's eye and makes her a pro- her, her protege, um, who's a, a whiz, a, a prodigy with, with math and engineering, um, and ends up working at NASA. And then alongside that, in that, in that little, in Margot's circle, is Sergei. I think it's, it's not the same, it's not Sergei Karolev, is it? I don't think it is. Um, but hmm. Sergey, I don't, I didn't remember seeing his last name, who is the, uh, head of the Russian space program. And in season two and season three, they, they form a bond in eventually a relationship, um, that is problematic uh, by the end. We'll get to that. Um, so I find, so just to start there, I find, uh, Ed and Karen's relationship interesting. Uh, Ed, they end up divorced. Ed's kind of volatile. Karen starts as a typical astronaut housewife, but ends up, you know, being the head of what is essentially SpaceX by the end mm-hmm. of season yeah. three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so kind of interesting. Her her um, and in fact, I would say the women in this series are much more prominent. There's a lot of very strong women that they're given. Uh, strong roles. Uh, so you have Margot. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the they called them Nixon's ladies. They were female astronauts, which is actually historical. There was a class of female astronauts that were being trained mm. uh, once because once the Russians sent up a, a female cosmonaut, we had to do the same thing, right? Uh, that mm. they eventually scrubbed it, but in the series they didn't. And so. Uh, you have Tr- uh, Tracy Stevens, who's the wife of Gordo Stevens. Um, Gordo Stevens is based on Eugene Cernan, a real historical astronaut, but mm-hmm. there wasn't an actual Gordo uh, Stevens. Um, and their kids, Danny and Jimmy. And then you had Danielle Poole, who is the, uh, she's the African-American astronaut. And Molly Cobb. Now, <laughs> Molly Cobb is an interesting character because in the series, she's very... Um, uh, what's the uh, iconoclastic? She's very dismissive of authority. She's very bullheaded. Um, she's kind of crass, maybe not kind of. <laughs> yeah, and I very... love her. I absolutely <laughs> yeah. love that character. You know the real Molly Cobb. After she, after they, 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 uh, they scrubbed the uh, female astronaut program, she would eventually go on to become a missionary pilot in the Amazon. She was actually a deeply Christian woman. Um, oh, wow. So the, really? the Molly, the Molly in this is not at all really apparently like the real Molly Cobb. Uh, but well, she, yeah, Jerry is the name of the real Jerry Cobb mm. is the name of the real person, right. but right, right. She's based on Jerry Cobb, but not, it's not actually Molly. That's right. Yeah. You're right. You know, and I have to admit, I, I really saw that she was, I thought at first she was to be like the spoil. She was to be the, you know, to, to, to spoil everything and to be the, you know, you know, I'm going to basically take over and get, you know, get shown up and stuff like that. And I didn't like her at first, but they really developed her character in a way that made her yeah a lot of fun, to be honest. And she and becomes see, a hero at several points. Yeah. yeah. And see, I can relate to her because she's the woman who has to act like a man to get what's due to her abilities. Right. She has to, if she doesn't take on that persona, then she gets pushed around. Cause all the, you see, you see Danielle get pushed aside. You see Ellen get a little pushed aside. Even Margot mm-hmm. gets pushed aside, but Molly stays. And because she is acting just like the guys and they right. don't like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Gee, that's too bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't think she says, gee, that's too bad. But yeah, it's something along those lines. Well, that's what I say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gee, that's yeah. too bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then you mentioned Ellen Wilson. 
Uh, so they have this subplot re- with Ellen and her husband. Larry. Larry, Larry. thank you. Mm-hmm. Ellen is, is a lesbian. Larry is gay. Back in the 60s, it was unacceptable, especially in NASA, so high profile. So they get married to kind of hide. These are This is a thing that apparently really happened. Mm-hmm. You know, I... As a Catholic, obviously, I don't think that the that you know uh, the homosexual lifestyle is is moral. I do believe that it's disordered affections and that sort of thing. Um, but I also don't think we should discriminate against people merely because they have th- these these in- inclinations, just like any other inclination. Uh, so, um, I just felt like, especially in season three, they got really heavy handed with that storyline between her <laughs> her. You think? And the don't ask, don't tell, and the the uh, the astronaut on Mars. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just, I'm sorry, but I just thought it, it went a, too far. It was a little contrived. I thought it was a little contrived, but yeah. I can. Und- but if they, but she became president, so mm-hmm. I think they may have written themselves on, into a corner on that one. They may have. They spent a lot what? of time on it in season three. I, I I wonder if they wrote themselves in a corner, or if it's more likely they wanted to get into that corner. Okay, maybe yeah. they, they, that they purposely were because they wrote her to be ambitious, where she was mm-hmm. ambitious politically. You know, after yeah. she, you know, she flew in one of the missions, she then went out for to you know run for public office, and as a Texas Republican, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah really. You know, that was a little on the nose there. But. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it, it felt it felt a little bit like the showrunners political point of view coming through a bit um oh you know that the those conservative texas republicans they might be secretly you know whatever you know it's just Mm -hmm. if and then like i said they spent a lot of time pushing that storyline in season three the the the, just in general and i just felt like can we get back to space (laughs) you know what i mean it just it didn't feel like we were talking about the space stuff anymore or as much so I I gotta I gotta give him a you know a knockdown on that and in fact that there were times where I really felt like they were kind of pushing like their their wishful thinking politics if only this could have happened. Every show does that. Uh, yes, they do. Mm-hmm. They do. Every every show does that. Yeah. But what I found interesting was Margot. Mm-hmm. Margot is a scientist who's a jazz musician. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And. You know, there, there is, there's a fine line between those two disciplines. Yes. And I mm-hmm. thought it was very interesting that she needed that other side of her to be nurtured in order to do her job. And, you know, as a musician myself, I see a lot of times that people want to get rid of music and get rid of the arts and to see her meld those two together yeah. to be a whole person. Yes. Yeah. Was, uh, I'm, uh, I was standing up and cheering. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was... Uh, it's interesting like cuz it was clear that NASA was her life. She didn't have a, mm-hmm. a spouse, she didn't have children. She lived at the she literally lived at the office. Yeah, really? They showed that mm-hmm. several times. Um so this be, like she was almost obsessed with it in 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 one sense. Not even in a sense. Like she told she was actually obsessed mm. with 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 NASA and the program and it was her thing. Uh which is why it's so interesting how by the end of it she lets a, a relationship get in the way of that thing. Um, mm. That relationship with Sergei, where she starts feeding him at first, she starts feeding him information that is safety information. Like, look, the design of your rocket, there's this problem with it. And, you know, if you don't fix it, someone's going to die. So here, here's what we learned about this. And that opened the door. And it's, it's kind of a cautionary tale a little bit because, you know, mm. the Soviets, as soon as you open a door, they walk through it and they're not, they're mm-hmm. not letting you close it, you know, and that's kind of what happens by the end of it. They start yep. using her affection for Sergei against her to make, make her continue to give them information. And, and by the way, uh, Sergei's last name was Nikolov. Sergei, oh, yes. Sergei Nikolov. Okay. Okay. Um, good, good actor. Good, good. Uh, he always plays the uh, Russians, uh, you know, or uh, very Slavic uh, peoples. Um, and he's a good character in this one. I really well, like he's, that. He's Polish, so that's yeah, not quite Polish. the same, but <laughs> yeah, he's Slavic, so yeah. Um, there you go. So let's talk. No, go ahead. No, I was, was going to say. I mean, she she was a very interesting character, especially the the whole issue of the the spy, and then when when um when they start getting close, um, Aleda gets close to figuring it out. She kind of tries to direct her another way, and don't you worry about this, and mm. right. 
she kind you know, of, she realizes she's in trouble. Right. Yeah. It was, I, it was a really fascinating aspect of season three was because Aleda owes everything to Margo. And so she's, but Aleda being this analytical person, she is eliminates everyone. She's it's her design. And she's so mad that the Russians took her design. And I kind of, I kind of like that. And, yeah. and so she's, she keeps digging when everyone else tells her, you know, stop, let it go, move on. It's not going to do any good. You're, you're imagining things. She just will not let it go until finally <laughs> she eliminates all other possibilities. It must be Margo and confronts her. And, uh, you know, by the end of it, we're waiting for the, this, the FBI is about to swoop in and arrest her. Like she's literally probably moments away from being arrested by the FBI when the, the the bomb explodes at NASA headquarters yep. in at the season finale. Uh, just, I, I know I'm jumping way ahead. Did you think she was dead? No, no, you no didn't, I, I, you I wasn't get, sure. I didn't buy it. I thought she was, I, I kind of thought she was, I was surprised by the post credit scene. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and by the way, did you notice that when they showed the, so the building bombing, it was the Oklahoma city yes. bombing? Yes. It was they used very, footage from that. Yeah, it was. Ve- yeah, I was noticing it was very reminiscent of the same style of, of the the the, the ripping the structure apart. You know, the the big hole in the middle. Well, there, yeah. there was there was one scene where it was clearly there's uh, like a curved corner on the building at yeah. Oklahoma City, yeah. and they showed that scene. It was a, a very familiar scene if you, you know if you remember the Oklahoma City bombing. I'm surprised. Timothy McVeigh and all that. I'm surprised with their all their CGI. They didn't create a new like they that they would reuse the oklahoma city bombing uh, maybe there was they did it on purpose they really want to evoke they did it, it on purpose i think they really did it uh, on purpose domestic terror they know. want to be, evoke domestic terrorism mm-hmm. I, I i've i've got a i don't know that one that one i wasn't as sure that yeah. they were trying to do that because i know they're doing alternate history but yeah yeah I don't know. It's it's kind of interesting because the because the bombers were almost similar um, motivations, you know, uh, distrust of the government and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. So. Um, so let's talk about season one and right. the uh, the uh, the events that happen in that season and where it all goes from there. Um, right. So, like I mentioned, the the Soviets land on the moon two weeks before the Americans were scheduled to land on the moon uh, in July, 1969. Um, And like I said before, that affects the American psyche. You know, it really changes the coming. Americans do not like to come in second at anything. (laughs) No, really? Second is first loser, you know? (laughs) So yeah, exactly. um, And uh, so that we have this, 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 this big, at, at first it's a shock. And then there's a big push. We got to get out there. We got to, you know, get them to the get to the moon now uh, with before, uh, you know, we lose everything before we're, you know, we're we're totally behind the Russians. Because, again, in the the 1960s, we were still afraid that the Russians might win and take over the world. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it was it was interesting, though. They they played it up the first scene. They they played it pretty coy that everybody's sitting there watching TV, you know, every bar and every house and everything, mm-hmm. everybody's watching TV. And they play, oh, like this is this is this is Apollo Eleven, the Apollo Eleven. Oh, wait, no, it isn't. It's the Russians. And oh, by the way, it's a female Russian. It's a female cosmonaut that landed. Right. Well, yeah, the first man on the moon was Alexei Leonov, uh, mm-hmm. from theirs. But then, yeah, then there was an oh, uh, the female. Sorry, yeah, I'm mixing yeah. the two up. But still, yeah, the, yeah, I mix the two up. Yeah, that's right. And well, also Apollo Eleven crashes on the moon at this one in this, yeah. this version mm. it doesn't doesn't have a nice smooth landing uh so that's kind of wild um then they have um nixon orders the building of a military moon base um wh- yeah so what do you think of this 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 becomes a big element in season one and two this idea of the militarization of the moon uh because it becomes the new the new battleground of the cold war the really mm. cold war. So, so Can't yeah. really. what did you think of that aspect of, of the story? Guns in space. Come on. <laughs> I, I, it, it, if you shoot a gun in space, it's going to go round and round. The It'll go forever. Just gonna, yeah. Right. So it's yeah. like, they have to be, it, it, the whole if, thing annoyed me. 
that whole military aspect, because I would hope that we would keep military aspect out of ex- exploration. You I, know, I, I, I mean, s- I, I understand that, yes, you have to have order and all that, but... I I hate to say it. I think that was entirely plausible. If history had worked out this way, that's absolutely what would have happened. And of course, on the moon, it's not going to go all the way around. There's going to be the gravity of the moon dragging the bullet down. Yeah. Yeah. It's still going to eventually, I mean, it won't lose power until it hits the surface, but the gravity is going to cause the trajectory. Now, it might take 100 miles for it to do that or something like (laughs) that. If you shoot it straight up, it'll, it'll, it, that's escape velocity. I mean, it'll, it'll certainly lose. Yeah. It'll keep going. Yeah. You know, but it, so it's, I hate to say it, I think it's absolutely, plausible that's exactly what would have happened if if mm. both the u.s and the soviet union had built lunar colonies there absolutely would have been some sort of weapons involved and for much the same reason why they show it right well then thank god it didn't happen yes yes yeah. but they end up building jamestown base which is interesting and uh, mm. uh in, in the meantime we had the uh the the female astronauts that that get trained we have deke slayton who is based on a real character, a real person. I'm sorry, a real historical figure. Um, mm-hmm. And we have these other um, w- women who come in, which we mentioned already, um, Molly, Tracy, and Ellen, and Danielle. And then we have, um, they've discovered ice on the moon, and that's becomes that's a source of rocket fuel. And so then we have this race to get there, and that's why we end up having these, these moon bases there. Um, and then we have um, Ed... Gordo and Danielle are sent to the moon base to, they call it Jamestown base. And they have through the first season, they have this problem where the resupply missions, Apollo like 23 explodes on the, on the launch pad kills mm-hmm. everyone involved. Uh, then including uh, Gene Kranz, by the way, who's yes. NASA legendary yep. NASA flight director. So he apparently dies in, in this uh, version of events. Um, there's an excellent episode of American Catholic history talking about Gene Kranz and his, he, who was a Catholic. Hmm. Uh, so it was interesting. Uh, then, um, so they're stuck up there. Then the, the next uh, mission goes up and they have a problem. And then, so they send a third mission up and that has to rescue the first one. And then there's this whole extended sequence of um, where Ellen and Deke are in this rescue mission. The a third guy gets caught in the bl- rocket blast and, <laughs> Just incinerated. Was, Gone. was he wearing yeah. a red shirt? <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah. probably was. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's it's, and then meanwhile, uh, Gordo on the in the in the base is starting to basically starting to lose his mind. He's, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's interesting to to think about this the the pressures of living in in a moon base like that. In the and they had a very small space to live in for months and months and months. Smaller than even a, than a submarine. Yeah. And, and all they had was Bob Newhart tapes. Yes. <laughs> one Bob one Newhart Bob, tape. One episode Hi, of Bob. Bob Newhart. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yeah. I Hi, love Bob. the fact that becomes a thing for them ever after. Yeah. Mm. The, the, the three of them. Um, well, and, and it, was, it was funny because there, there was one point, it just went by real quick, but they asked, you know, can we get more video sent up? So the resupply missions got there. It was the recruiting missions that kept having problems. Right, mm. right, right. Because they were, they were unmanned rockets that were sent up and so they could get food and water and or food and everything else they needed. And they kept saying, can we get more, you know, newer shows? It's like, Oh no, the, the studios don't want that. Cause people might think they can record their own shows and watch them later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <on the> moon. <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, that's the other the thing is, um, uh, I was going to say the, uh, the, the, they didn't want to them to leave the moon the base unguarded. They couldn't leave it mm-hmm. there right. with the Soviets there as well. And that's why they wouldn't let them leave. Uh, so eventually uh, Ed and Danielle realized that Gordo, the Gordo's losing his gourd. And he's, he's yeah. the, you need to get him out Basically. of there. And Danielle intentionally breaks her arm to make it mm-hmm. so that Gordo has to bring her back. Yep. Uh, what'd you think of that? Because it it kind of makes it oh the weak girl you know she remember see see girls are, can't really hack it in space what do you think of her putting herself literally on the line like that that's true friendship right there yeah. she knew he mm-hmm. had to get out of that situation and there was very you know what would be more plausible is the weak female needs to come home right so the strong man has to bring her home 
Right. That and was that the would narrative. Keep his integrity. Yeah. And they kept saying we we don't want him to suffer for this. We you know if, if it comes out that he lost his mind up there, he'll never fly again. Right. And I, you know I'll be honest. And of course, in, in not being an astronaut, but I'd be like, well, guess what. <laughs> you Too probably bad. shouldn't. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. You probably then. shouldn't. Yeah, if you're yeah. losing your mind being up here, you probably shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, but remember, we've seen a lot of different um, depictions of astronauts in different in different stories, and they were always the cool Air Force pilots who drive mm-hmm. the fast cars, who have all the girls, yep. which is probably somewhat true of what actually happened. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there's oh, a yes. rep to maintain. Well, and, there's, and, and, they were, they, and in the seventies, it's absolutely plausible yeah. that, that if, and I'm going to, I'm going to use the, the gay couple. If you can't tell anybody that you're gay. Okay. You also can't tell anybody you have a mental problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's the same thing. It's the same deal. Yeah. Well, but it's, Gordo it's again, they, is, they, they absolutely were, test pilots they were fighter pilots some of them fought in the you know the real ones fought in the vietnam war the before Korea, the, vietnam yep you know yeah. so i mean that that was that was absolutely real and of course they're gonna they're gonna watch for their own right mm-hmm. right so the the first season takes place between 1969 and then jumps to later in around 1970 i think 1973 or four i think is that the, sounds right um so then season two picks up in 1980 um, or thereabouts. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, a new, uh, let's see, Reagan has just been reelected, like we mentioned. Um, Ed Baldwin's now chief of the astronaut office, which means he decides who flies and who doesn't. Um, mm-hmm. Karen, they, the, uh, the outpost is the astronaut bar that uh, all the astronauts went to, and Karen's now running it. Um, they've adopted their daughter, Kelly. We mentioned Shane their, fir- their son had died, and that was a big element in season one. He died in an accident while Ed was on the moon, and that mm-hmm. created the rift that eventually, probably eventually is, drives Ed and Karen apart. Um, yep. Then um, Gordo and Tracy have split, and mm-hmm. Tracy's married to this, you know, Texas millionaire. Um, and, I didn't like him. And she's become <laughs> a celebrity, like she's showing up on Johnny Carson and stuff like that. So she's a big celebrity. And then they have uh, this, they're going to have this Skylab mission uh, or no, the Apollo Soyuz mission, I think is what they're talking about. Yep. And, and uh, there's going to be this new uh, nuclear powered space shuttle pathfinder, which is the next generation. It's going to be, and this talk of uh, arming it. I, I thought it was interesting that at mission control, there was this room next door to the main mission control that was like the Pentagon room. That's where the military mm-hmm. stuff happened. There was a, there was an Air Force general in there, and uh, and so like NASA by this point is, you know, it's got a whole fleet of space shuttles. It's sending. It's the promise of, of space shuttles that we had when in the, in the real time, which is oh yeah, we have mission every two weeks and all that sort of stuff. And so that's where they're at with this, um, and it's kind of fascinating to see how quick again how quickly things had progressed. Um, so this is the season where we have the, uh, uh, the Russians attack the Jamestown base, um, mm-hmm. killing a bunch of people. And in the middle of that, you have, um, uh, let's see, I'm just looking at my notes here. So Gordo and Tracy, they are divorced, but they end up at Jamestown base together and they end up having to work together to save the base from a nuclear disaster. One of the Soviet those bullets you're talking about, Joanne, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, hits the nuclear reactor and starts causing a meltdown. And they have, um, they have to save it by making makeshift spacesuits out of duct tape. And and then they, of course they die in the, in the attempt and become heroes, but, uh, they, they save the base. Um, and Gordo's in the buildup to that, he has to, he he goes to this redemption arc, you know, from, Mm -hmm almost losing his mind on the moon, which affects him when he gets back and he starts drinking too much. He kind of becomes, I think he becomes an alcoholic Mm -hmm. and he has to come back from that and fight his demons and fight his addiction and really get, and get back into shape so that he can go. And it's Ed who champions him the whole way. I thought that was a really interesting storyline to see this man overcoming his demons uh, to become a hero. And he wanted his wife back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which Mm -hmm. I thought was great. 
Yes. You know, I mean, I liked the two of them because mm-hmm. they were matched pair. Right. Okay. They they were matched, even though he was unsure of himself. She was unsure of herself in some things. But I yep. thought that they matched perfectly. Not like Ed and Karen. Ed and Karen are like, he's, <laughs> ma- yeah, he's like Mr. Macho. And she's she's the little wife until she learns how to not become the little wife and then becomes Mrs. Macho, which didn't make me happy. I, right. I, you know, there were, I, I just did not warm up to either of them at all. Yeah. It was also interesting how she, he is tempted to violate his marriage vows, but doesn't. Mm-hmm. She does. She does. In a very big, and not even with temptation. She just decides I'm going to do it. Right. Yep. Like right. boom. And, uh, and does it with the, uh, uh, you know, with her, son's best friend who's now an, a you know a young man um yep. which is just horrible it, and it has again repercussions that will go all the way to mars <laughs> and yeah and, and uh, probably beyond so it's it, it's smacked of it's smacked of the graduate yeah yeah, yeah. so oh, it was, much it was, it, well yeah. the the name of the episode was even like you know what well, and here's I just to had you it. was the and here's to the you episode. here's to you mrs robinson I didn't, I didn't miss that at all you know yeah that's one thing oh. about apple tv shows and this one is is the same they have the greatest soundtracks yes oh, yeah. whoever yeah. is doing the music for the for this show and for and for like schmigadoon and even ted mm. lasso they're they've got a real good command of the library musical well, library and they know exactly what to pick well, and, and a lot of the closing credit music was popular music from the time. Oh, yeah. From that, from that year that they're depicting, yeah. So, yeah. so, like, from the 90s, you'd had Nirvana was one of them. From the 70s, you had... You yeah, know, American trying to think of some, Woman. You had... American um, Woman, yeah. You had Frank Sinatra at times, which I was like, whoa, who wants yeah. that? <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they did but, such I a great mean, job with stuff. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I really... I, that, that, that whole plot line... Is, there's, there's a couple plot lines we, we mentioned already, the one with, with Ellen... Uh, and Larry, but also um, the whole plot line with with uh, Karen, I could have done without. Mm. Yeah, I I agree. Those both of those, I uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they 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 were uh, it felt unnecessary uh, in the long run. Um, I mean, although the 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 problems it causes Danny in season three, mm-hmm. I think are rooted in what happened with with Karen. But I, I agree. I mean, I, 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 I didn't like to see it, but uh, you would need to replace it with something else that brings Danny to that point that he's at in season three. The, the yeah. fact is you've got a like father, like son going on there, though. Yeah. And just like yeah, his father you, went nuts. The son went nuts. Yeah, yeah. But you've got two like father, like like fa- like father, like sons, because Jimmy ain't no prize either. <laughs> no. Yeah. Neither of those kids. And, I, you know, you look at Tracy and Gordo. And you, but but you see a redemption in Gordo, and you see that she, he, and Tracy do love each other when they, when they go out and do that mission. Because yeah. why, you know? And their kids are so screwed up. Like yeah. it makes you wonder: <laughs> is uh, you know, are, are they going to have redemptions as well? I mean, Jimmy, um, I think Jimmy's dead, right? At the end of that? No, he no, was alive. He oh, he, right. Yeah, he's right. in big doo doo. I hope he gets in big yeah. doo doo. He tried. Yeah. He tried to stop them he, mm-hmm. unsuccessfully, but maybe he'll get a redemption. Um, one of the th- let's see. One of the things I wanted to mention for season two um, was Molly. Her first sacrifice, a self sacrificial act. There's this solar flare that's coming, and they all have to get undercover. And there's this one astronaut, Wubbo. He's uh, Dutch, I think. <laughs> Which is mm-hmm. Wubbo. And they're out, you know, far from the base. So they, so they got to take cover in these caves. But Wubbo is stuck outside. And so Molly, who's safe, leaves safety, goes to get him. And they both get uh, a fatal dose, what will probably be a fatal dose of radiation. Wubbo actually, I think, dies of cancer pretty soon. Mm-hmm. She ends up going blind because of it. And so can't yep. fly again, which is a major problem for her. And yet she doesn't let it hold her back. She becomes head of the astronaut office after Ed, um, even even being blind. So kind of wild, kind of awesome. And it, just a note, I was looking to see how close that wristband looked like an Apple watch. 
Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of did. Kind of did. You, know, um, you had to. I, I was really looking around for some of the Apple products, but maybe it was a little too early. Other than the Newton. Yeah. Um. I, when we get into the two thousands now, let's see what they do with Apple products. Yeah. I, I did think it was. I did think it was kind of funny though. In the eighties, and we were talking the time like uh, Apple II and going into Macintosh. Yep. That the NASA still had a PC. She had a green screen IBM PC on her desk instead of yeah, you know, like a Mac or something well, like that. But, yeah, that's you know, she'd be a uh, you know, uptight, you know, engineering type who wants a PC instead of a Mac, you know? <laughs> mm. Yeah, sure. I did. <laughs> I did like the video phone Newtons from season three. Like if we get, since we're mm-hmm. bringing it up and the, apparently what they did was they, they, they took an iPhone 12 and built a Newton case around it with a camera that was from, I think it was from a trio, a Palm trio had, had oh, the, that's funny. Uh, and that they, that they kind of fitted into it. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. It was, there was one that it clipped on the back of the, the Palm. Yeah. It was Sony. Mm. It was Sony. It was Sony handspring. I want to say had that. Oh, okay. Okay. So it apparently was a practical effect. It was, it did real, a real call. They used the real app on that mm. iPhone uh, to do it. And so it was kind of fun to, to see that, uh, just, you know, imagine what if. Um, but the cell phones were still bricks. Yes, the cell yeah, phones those themselves. Shoe phone type things. <laughs> yeah. So then you have um, Ellen, who uh, after the she gets back from the, the the mission in season one, she becomes a deputy administrator, and then there's this. She's about to leave at NASA uh, because over the I think this talk about defunding Mars uh, mm-hmm. mission, whatever. She's going to go on this trip with the NASA administrator, Thomas Paine, mm. but at the last minute changes her mind. And then the plane gets shot down by the Russians and it's Korean airlines, 007. Uh, mm. you, you guys remember that, right? Yes. That was yes. a real event that happens in the, in the eighties where the Russians shot down a Korean airliner, uh, Korean airlines, 007 flight, 007, um, that, there was actually a U.S. congressman on board that, if I remember correctly. Um, the mm-hmm. Russians claimed that they thought it was a spy plane, that it had veered into Soviet space. Right. Um, and it created a big, a big, big incident. And it does in this show, too. Uh, it was one of those serendipitous things where her father has a heart attack. So mm-hmm. what do you do? Right. Do you she, go on the mission or do you go for your family? And he says, you know, family first. Right. Tells so her to stay. she go right. She tells her to stay, and that if she would have been on that plane, we would have lost the whole storyline. Right, yep. right. Uh, yeah, she wouldn't have become president. So right. they. Uh, so meanwhile, uh, we have Kelly, who is the daughter, uh, the adopted daughter of Ed and Karen. She's um, she's applying to Annapolis to, to join to enter the Navy, um, and then we have a whole storyline of her. Um, researching her birth parents, I guess. I don't think there's a whole lot there. I, I'm kind of, I was kind of curious the point of it. I'm not sure. It, I, I've kind of, I, I don't know. I, I kind of felt like it was another one of these um, diverge, you know, d- d- diversions that didn't really tangent that didn't really add anything. I, I kind of wish they would have done a little bit more with it because there are a lot of Vietnamese children who have mm-hmm. American you know, have come to America or have American parentage. Yep. And if they would have done a little bit more with that, mm-hmm. I think it could have been, I think it could have been very interesting. They kind of did it and then dropped it. Yeah. It was yeah. Like, this, is an, this is our nod to ancestry.com. That's it. We're done. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a very large Vietnamese population in, I think the largest in the U S is in the Houston area. Um, so it's, you know, it's a very important community there. They could have done a lot more with it and they just it kind of felt like they, kind of waved at the idea, but didn't do anything with it. Unless they're going to come back to it in season four. I suppose that's possible. Uh, so season three starts in 1992. Uh, Karen and Ed are divorced. Um, Karen is, she's gone into business with uh, uh, Tracy's uh, widower husband, uh, Sam Cleveland. Uh, what a name. And they've started a space hotel business. So yes, in 1992, there was a space hotel um, and Danny Stevens is getting married. He's an officer, he's a naval officer now uh, and going to be, I think he's an astronaut at the, that's the point. Um, he's hmm. getting married. And uh, so they all go up to the, to the space hotel where there's an accident. Uh, I think it was a Russian 
Russia blew up something and it damaged the hotel. I think it was. And um, uh, Danny has to save the day. But in the meantime, uh, Ed gets injured and uh, Sam Cleveland gets killed and some of the stuff. And you have this scene of the high G's because it's a rotating artificial gravity, you know, like 2001 Space Mm -hmm. Odyssey sort of thing. Um, But it starts Mm -hmm. spinning out of control. And so the G's are going higher and higher. I thought I thought that was really interesting and kind of well done that all that whole bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the yeah, the what happened was the Russians blew up one of their satellites as a training for a, a ground to ground to uh, space rocket. Right. And it caused the debris floated into the the path of the the hotel and it broke one of the thrusters so that was stuck on. And right. that's why it was it going faster and faster um you know and showing the effects of that. Yeah. So uh that is a disaster for Polaris and you know a public relations disaster and they end up having to sell the the company to this guy named Dev Ayesa the founder of Helios Aerospace who wants to use it for their own private Mars mission and clearly Dev Ayesa is Elon Musk and Helios Aerospace <laughs> is SpaceX well, I well, had a little he's from problem. Africa. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a little problem because he was my Mr. Solomon from the blacklist. And I'm like, wait a minute. So now <laughs> what's going to happen? Every time he's around, something weird happens. Well, it did. <laughs> kind of did. Yeah. Kind of did, but not as graphic. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's very, um, he's very full of himself. He likes to talk about how it's, we're a very, you know, flat company. It's, we make collaborative decisions and it's clear He's running things, you know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's all, it's all a, a bit, it's all his ego. Um, well, and they, they show that one time where Karen presents one option and he, he wants, he absolutely has to go for this other option. Oh, it's, it's rescuing the, the Russians. Right. You know, yeah. that, that as they're going to Mars and of course, Karen's like, you have, you know, law of the sea, you have to go help them. And he puts the vote out there. And of course he gets up there and we're going to make it and we're going to be in first and, you know, all this stuff and who's in favor. And they raise a hand. There you go. That's all you need to know. Yeah. And that was it. But she never got a chance on, to speak in contrast, you know, nothing. But right. later on, him, nothing. she uses it to her advantage because she yes. throws out the, the, because they're about ready to f- march with him into the deep and he's yep. not going to be able to compensate them properly. And she says, so <laughs> what's going to happen with all your, you know, how are you going to compensate them? And they're all going, huh? Yeah. What do you mean? And your stocks, how are you your retirement that you're getting out of this. Yeah. Lemmings. Can you yeah. say lemmings? Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, the demagogue gets out demagogued. Mm-hmm. So so we have this Mars mission. So NASA's getting their Mars mission together, and Ed and Danielle are competing to be commander of the mission, and Molly is dithering between them. She doesn't know which one to pick. Ed's clearly got the experience, but Danielle is not a hothead like Ed is. So, you know, it's, so she's going back and forth. Um, when... Uh, when Danielle gets the job, Ed goes off to Helios to command their mission. Mm-hmm. Um, and then meanwhile, the Russians are also racing. And so you have this three-way race to get to Mars. And so at one point, I thought it was kind of fun. You have them all in space at the same time. Yeah. And uh, this is, oh, speaking of Apple technology, this is when Kelly pulls oh. out the iPod. You remember that? First generation iPod. Yes. First generation iPod, right? In the in the early nineties, they were 90s. literally they were literally close enough that they were within radio communication range. Yeah, that's how you know, mm. like a thousand mile or not a thousand, you know, like a million miles or something, you know, within range where they could communicate back and forth without any difficulty whatsoever. Right. And so she was doing like a radio show where she'd play music off of the pirate radio. The iPod. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pirate well, radio. Which I thought was great. It was <laughs> fantastic, and, and also the fact that the. Uh, you know, the Phoenix was pretty far ahead. That's the uh, the the Helios mission with the the former space hotel, which is so mm-hmm. big that they're living in luxury, you know, compared to the other yeah. two ships, uh, which I kind of like. I thought it was kind of funny, um, you know, because this is what happens when you have a private enterprise. Their food is better. Their accommodations are better. They're living they in a luxury have, hotel. And they then, have gravity. Yeah. They have actual Earth yes. gravity, unlike everybody else. Right, right. Then you have Sojourner One, who's behind, but then they deploy the sails and they do this whole pirate thing like a vast maybe. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Solar sails. That was over the top. Yeah. I, I'm I not thought sure, it was a little over the top. I'm not sure solar sails would give you that much of an advantage unless, because it, 
it so solar sails work by by the pressure of the solar wind of particles flying off from the sun and mm -hmm. you know in any one place it's relatively i mean you we, we, you wouldn't feel it so you have to have truly massive sails to, to for it to have any effect and like we're talking like my kilometers square miles you know square square mm -hmm. kilometers worth of sail and it takes time you know to 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 get the momentum from it so i'm not no i, I don't know what do you think i i, I give them because i mean they had what was it six months nine months to get between earth and mars i guess mm -hmm. yeah you know and i mean Contrary to DS9's opinion, no, you can't go warp one using a solar no. sail. That's another story altogether. Oh my gosh, I hate, that. <laughs> I hate that episode. <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, I could see it. it wouldn't be as dramatic as they showed it, where they put them out, all of a sudden they're doing, you know, Mach 0.5 over what everybody else is doing or <laughs> right. something like that. You know, it would just be a little bit, you know, over the course of the six months, nine months, whatever it is, going just a little bit faster than everybody else, you know, right. unless they burn their rockets, you know. That's true. That's true. And then, of course, it's the Soviet ship, which is built, you know, by the Soviet standards that has a problem that has to be rescued that then uh, damages Sojourner. Uh, but meanwhile, so the, the Russian and American crews have to combine on Sojourner while uh, yeah, um, Phoenix continues. Uh, but in the end, it's. Uh, the sojourner that gets to Mars first. And so you have this great scene of sojourner landing, and then they have to decide, well, who gets to go outside first? Oh, I love that. And so then you have Danielle and the, uh, the, 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 the head of the, I think, I don't remember his name, the, the guy. Russian commander. Yeah. The Russian commander wrestling on the ground onto <laughs> the surface. And Literally, this is the image that, that we great. have. Uh, the, the, first, the first step on, on Mars is the two of them literally rolling onto yeah. the ground fighting. <laughs> it was more of a wrestling move, kind of rolling and, and, off the, off the uh, platform. It ended up being pointless anyways because... Uh, Right. Shortly before those missions all launched, the mm -hmm. uh, North Koreans launched a probe, quote unquote, which had two men on on board mm -hmm. that landed first. Was it two guys? Did the, oh, right. Yes. That's yes. the first guy. One of them two, died. One of them died. It was basically a suicide mission these guys were going on to, yeah. to, to Mars, which is. But the North Korean guy was the first guy to step out onto the Mars surface. It really was. Yeah. I, I thought that was an interesting episode, that episode where they kind of flash back to this guy landing there in the months that he was there mm -hmm. alone on Mars mm. uh, and, and then having to try to keep this communication between the Russian, the, uh, the American and the Korean about what's going on. And, you know, and then they, they, they take him captive and it turns out it's Ed who was in the Korean war who could speak to the guy a little bit. Yep. So in the yeah. meantime, you have um, the, the Russians who, you know, hitched a ride from the Sojourner, end up making a deal with Helios to drill for water in a spot that the Russians know of, that they've found, and water mm -hmm. being vital to, to starting a, a permanent base on Mars, uh, but not telling the Americans. And so you have this tension there, and then they go, they start this drilling, and Danny, who has become addicted to painkillers, like he's become an oxy addict, I think, um, mm -hmm. at one point... He's supposed to be overseeing the like the drilling pressure or yep. something like that, and ends up just like he's so high, the 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 voices are annoying him, so he turns off the communications, and there's this explosion that causes an avalanche and buries basically buries everything, uh, mm -hmm. the the whole base, and they have to be rescued. And now they're at a point where at that point, um, people are injured, they're they're uh ships to go back up to orbit so Jerner won't fly again because of the damage they were going to take the uh the uh phoenix back and they were going to use their l sams their landers to get back up but they're damaged they don't have enough fuel to get everybody off um they, they have to make fuel and then they find out that kelly is pregnant she had had mm -hmm. this relationship with one of the cosmonauts who died in the in the avalanche um and this was a very interesting part of the episode because someone hints at it at one point, but there's no real serious like advancing the idea that she shouldn't have this baby, that she should abort this baby. There's no, like this is, they're doing this to save lives, two lives. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that was kind of cool that we have this acknowledgement that we're saving lives here, two of them when we're trying to save this mother. 
Yes. Of course, if you go and listen to the newscasts, because they show the different newscasts, one of them does mention, you know, she decided not to abort this baby. Right. Yep. And I was like, interesting that yeah. you would put that out there. But the whole thing was, you know, I was waiting for the, uh, at the point where we were going to have love in space because mm -hmm. I was just, you know, it was inevitable that it would happen at some point. If you send men and women to Mars, you yeah. know, on a, on a two year long mission. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's happened on submarines where they've had men and women on Navy submarines. It's happened on carriers. Of course, mm -hmm. it's gonna, you know. There's the infamous love boat, which was this uh, auxiliary ship uh, during the, the uh, Gulf War. I think it was a Gulf War. Uh, it was the first Navy ship that had uh, a half female crew. Um, mm -hmm. It came back with something like 12 pregnant <laughs> sailors or something i mean yeah, I, I, I shouldn't laugh but it's i mean it's just kind of this is this is what happens when you you put people yep. in proximity and you know we have to kind of think about this and this is actually one of the objections people have come up with with elon musk's plan to permanently settle on mars is we don't know how to how we have you know well, we don't know how to have babies safely in space or on the surface right. of another planet and microgravity right. with the radiation. This is a this is a an unknown, you know, land, a strange land that we're entering. Um, what would happen? What would happen to this baby? Will it could could you even could you even carry a baby to term? In microgravity on Mars, that's mm. yeah. And, and Mars isn't anywhere as bad as as the Moon is. The Moon is one sixth gravity. Mars is uh, sixty two percent yes. of Earth's gravity. So there's still pretty good gravity there. Mm. And so it, I mean, it might be might be a non issue because it's that strong. But it might be but, a problem because of uh, or, higher radiation or that sort of thing too. But the uh, the cosmonaut doctor kept saying, "I don't have the ability to do this here safely." Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it was more his lack of equipment. Right. On the surface. Because, yeah. yeah, because they they weren't planning to, you know, do obstetrics. They were planning right. on other things. Yeah. Right. So and that's why they wanted to get her up to, to exactly. um, Phoenix. Yeah. They had, they, they, they actually had like an actual sick bay in mm. Phoenix than they did on Earth. And I have to correct myself. It's 38% of Earth. The yeah. article I was looking at phrased it wrong. So oh, okay. phrased it weird. So but it's 38% of Earth. But the way they get so her there... Is the, that could be that could be a big difference, actually, then. Yeah. Yeah. But the way they get her there has got to be up for one of the more interesting oh, science yeah. experiments. I was like, <laughs> seriously, we're going to do what with a night with an eight month pregnant woman? <laughs> the guy to yeah. strap uh, her to the roof and yeah. catapult her. I love the fact that it was Ed flying it like his daughter. Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't right. going to let anybody else know nope. with his daughter and his grandchild. And I was. I was wondering whether Ed would survive the the descent, whether what, yeah. whether they were going to have him survive or not. It, that's yeah. I didn't think they were going to off two of the two main characters like yeah. that. They'd already done two, so yeah, I had right. a feeling he would be okay. Although Ed's getting up there, like how many more seasons can they have this guy be a, a, a major character? You know what I mean? That's the by by the. By the season four, he's going to be in his 70s, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to be the old man in the chair like the uh, drowsy chaperone. Yeah, you know, he has, right. to, be, he has yeah. to be the old man in the chair telling the story. Right, right. Um, so so I, I really like the, 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 uh, that element of the story where, you know, they, we, the whole world was caught up in the story of the pregnant astronaut. And she had preeclampsia and she had to be saved and they had to get her up there. And so everybody all the people on the surface of Mars have to agree that we'll stay here an extra, what was it? Nine months or something like that. Cause, yeah. cause they mm -hmm. all, they, if they all crammed into the shuttle, they might make it up, but they would have, but they would have to wait more time to get more fuel or they could all stay behind and launch her now and save her life. And everybody's, you know, clearly just going to save her life. Mm. Um, and, uh, and then they send Danny to live alone as punishment for his actions that cost the lives of so many, they sent him to live yeah. alone in the the North Korean capsule until yeah. such that. time. Wow. I mean, I wonder, they don't say what happens because of course the end of season three jumps forward to the year after the year 2000. Yeah. I wonder if they'll go back and address that. They will. Oh yeah. I wonder I if everyone, so. some, even if it's, even if it's just like a, you know, like a flashback scene or something, they're, they're you know, or how are they going to clear that up? You know? 
Right. Cause but, but I thought it was perfect redemption because he needs to go out in the desert and yes. really consider yep. things. But if he's his father's son, he might go not so over in the yeah. North Korean capsule by himself, man, I cannot imagine like just being cooped up like that, you know, in that and small they, space. And they, they did say that they were going to bring him other, you know, bring more resources as they right. go along. He, would need you know, he wasn't going to be. Yeah. He would need resupply on a regular basis. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so meanwhile, uh, what else? I mean, there's a lot of political stuff that happens. We mentioned, um, and then we have the bombing of the Johnson space center. And so what, mm -hmm. so what had happened is, is because of the helium three that NASA had was mining on Mars, the, uh, the, the oil was being replaced as a fuel source. So you didn't need as much oil. We had mm -hmm. electric vehicles and all that sort of stuff. And that was putting a lot of oil workers out of jobs and causing civil unrest. And so Jimmy Stevens falls under the sway of these anti-government anarchists. And Jimmy, oh, Jimmy, he, he <laughs> fell for the pretty face. I mean, oh, yeah. he, he's, he is not the brightest bulb on the tree. I'm sorry. but Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> no. and, well, and this, this group was like, the, you know, they're lying to you. Your parents didn't actually die the way they say they did. And like they stole, they stole the statues of the two of them. Like yeah. there's the, you know, his parents, the statue of the two of them are put up in front of NASA headquarters or John Space Center. And they stole it, you know. Oh, like that would be possible even. Like you could steal it, you know. They wouldn't be yeah, security I mean, guards, cameras. Yeah. Well, if and it was I, on like, you know, marble. Yeah. covering and your marvel stand and everything but it's it just he uh they they were convinced that it was all conspiracy and all this kind the of stuff and you know fake and news that, thing a yep. little bit yeah it, it, a little if, bit just a if, little bit it was the stupidest plot line yet <laughs> yeah yeah I, seriously because all right there could have been to say that his parents didn't actually do that that i mean i know they're trying to make the correlation to a lot of people who don't believe that we walked on the moon Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, if you look at the story, his parents died trying to save something. So you're going to say that was all staged. At yeah. least with the moon, it was like, well, no, this was, you know, they were on some soundstage somewhere in, in California doing this. No, no it, it, it didn't. It, to me, it didn't ring right. Yeah. So I thought it was a very stupid plot line to well, get him. There are still those who actually say man did not oh, walk on the moon. So oh, no, no, to this I, day, I agree with that. But I think oh, I'm talking about just this plot line to get him into that. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. just I, I wasn't buying it. It would be hard to, to, to for anyone to seriously believe like like what would be the motivation for faking like that they to faking their death like that why would NASA fake their death the to make them heroes? I don't know. But yeah, Jimmy just, just even from season one, Jimmy just never seemed like the brightest bulb. Uh, uh, no. And maybe they're doing that in in contrast to his, his brother, Danny, who was supposedly the, the shining star, the, 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 you know, the, the overachiever who was also a flawed character. So we'll, yep. we'll see if he gets a redemption in season, season four, that uh, it might be, I don't know if that's possible or not. Um, but in any case, they, they blow up the building. Uh, and we get this dramatic scene. I think it is it um, Alita who goes to Margot's office. Yes, and like yeah. she opens the door and just like we had seen last time we saw Margot, she had sat down at the piano to play music, and then we mm -hmm. see this hole where the yep. piano was. Like, there's no way she that she could survive that uh, that that tear out. Well, in in. And Alita was actually going to confront Margo when the explosion happened about the Russian collusion. Yes. Mm. She was actually going to confront her at that moment. And then the bomb went off. And that's when then after that, it's when she walked into the office. But wasn't somebody talking? And if I, I'm trying to remember correctly, wasn't somebody talking to Margo about trying to get her out of there? There was one of, there was the yes. Russian was one of the Russians mm -hmm. said, let me get you out of here. Right. Yeah. Because they knew something was going to happen. They apparently, well, well sir, that's the, in, the implications that the Russians might have even been behind the bombing. Mm. Well, no, the, the Russians, no. Um, the Russians went and it was the, the head of like the Russian, the, the female head of the Russian yeah. missions or whatever. She was like, okay, we're going to get you out of here because the FBI is after you. Right. We're going to get you somewhere else. Right. Um, but they used the bombing as a cover to get her like to, to the, they think she's dead. I, I don't know if, yeah, I, I don't know if they use that as a cover, if they just, the bombing happened and we had this convenient opportunity to just smuggle her out of here before I, we knew. 
I think they smuggled her before the bombing. I think it was a coincidence because remember the guy with the bomb is the ex astronaut. Now, mm. unless he was in league with the Russians or which we don't know, yeah, could have had a cutout like the Russians, you know, could have, could have been, you know, had uh, someone undercover pushing mm. it, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think they, they made it clear that there was Russian involvement in the actual bomb. Let's just put no, it that right, way. right. I guess I might be speculating because it would be an interesting dramatic point if the Russians were actually behind the bombing of the NASA Space Center. That would cause a huge problem, uh, mm -hmm. you know, diplomatically well, uh, in season four. When, and the problem, the problem with the timing of it is that they set off the bomb when they did because they got caught. Right. Karen and Sa had... Yep. heard from Jimmy about it. Jimmy went to her and said, there's this bomb in the back of this van. We need to evacuate. Right. And Karen went and alerted and they saw her doing that and they set off the right. you know, via remote telephone. Okay. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I, I mean, it's all speculation on my part, I guess. We'll, we'll see what happens in the, yeah. the fourth season because, oh, by the way, spoiler, Margot ends up in the Soviet Union right. in Moscow yes. in the year 2000. So Karen is dead. She dies not knowing that her daughter has been saved by the way that was mm -hmm. that tragic uh timing um yep. so she's she's died kelly survived her baby is, is healthy um then uh molly is a hero because even is bl because she's blind she knew the halls of the space center very you know without you know blindly without sight right. and could navigate them. And so she was guiding people out of the smoke filled mm -hmm. corridors to safety. And, and later on, we're told we don't see it, but we're told that she died in there. And so they ended yep. up renaming the Johnson space center, the Molly Cobb space center, which is kind of, kind of cool. And, yep. uh, Sergei, who the, they, uh, the Russians gave up in exchange for Margo, basically they, he's living in America suburban America while we see Margot in the Soviet union in 2003. And that's mm. presumably where the next season will start up is somewhere around 2003 or so. But there's a couple of interesting subplots here. Uh -huh. um, one of them is Kelly's baby because right. the Russians are very interested because the father is the Russian cosmonaut. Yes. yes. So will that come into play in season four? Will they try to take the baby and, yeah. Oh, please don't go that. Now we're going to do the blacklist if we try doing that. <laughs> please do not take pages out of that series. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, what do you what do you think we're going to see in season four and, you know, the 2000s? Uh, uh, we will we my guess is we'll have a, the, the starting of a permanent Mars colony. I mean, that will probably be mm -hmm. the big plot line um, now that they've landed. Now it's let's start a permanent colony. Uh, what else do you think? I'm guessing, I, I'm guessing by that the Mars colony will have been established. Right. That the permanent colony will have been established by this point. Okay. Because it's 10 years or so between the bombing yeah. and then 95, 2003. 2003. So eight years. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. eight years. Eight years. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the colony will be there. I'm wondering if it's going to be a joint colony. If, you know, mm -hmm. basically they're going to continue working with the Soviets. Um, it's still going to be the Soviet Union. As a matter of fact, the, the, yep. the, the final scene shows that you see the Soviet flag still flying over Moscow. Right. Will, um, it, will it be a three-way cooperation with North Korea? Oh, interesting. Mm. North yeah, Korea. You've, oh, got uh, North, you've got the North Korean astronaut yeah. there. You can't, if they just snuff him away with next season, I'll be like, well, there's a missed opportunity. Right. Yeah. Maybe something to do with the North Koreans, like kind of a, Yeah. They have or at a, least like the North Koreans are working. <laughs> yeah, the North Koreans are working with the Soviets or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe through I can the see Chinese. That being the most likely. Maybe the Chinese yeah. will be, start Ooh. to play a bigger role in the series. That yeah. would be interesting mm -hmm. to bring them in. Um, I'll be interested to see for Helios what they're going to do with that, with yes. the private well, private mm -hmm. company being involved. Are they going to go off on their own? Well, now that uh, Karen is dead, like what is what does that mean for Helios? That's a that's an interesting yeah. question because mm. she was going to be the CEO. Um, does Dev yeah. come back in? You know, it's it's an mm -hmm. interesting question. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, what? You know, so we talked about you know what's what's Ed doing. We we don't know what that. Um, Ellen will no longer be president. She'll she'll have served no. two terms if if she got reelected. But uh, in either case, she's done. So um, so I'm not sure. It'd be in, kind of interesting she to see what. Go, it, yeah, she might go back and head NASA. 
because I NASA think, is still her well, baby. Well, given her public, uh, you know, um, announcement that she's a lesbian, uh, that might make her political uh, pariah. So. I but don't know it, about that because they weren't leaning in that direction. They kind of left that ambivalent. Like half the mm -hmm. people were happy and half the people weren't. Right. Which is about the same as today. Yeah. By, by the way, did you notice that they, they used the Westboro Baptist Church as the opposing side? But still, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here, here's a hint. Just because we oppose it doesn't mean we, we you know, we want to see them burn yeah. or anything like or, that. Or that we hate. Know. Or, that, right. like that. or right. we hate. Yeah. Right. That's not, that's not the case. Um, but. Yeah, it'll be curious to see if you know and where they might go beyond season four into a season five. Like, what could they, where could mm -hmm. we, where could we see them going in the future? So, like, do you think they'll take it to the present day, like twenty twenty five? Are we gonna eventually see that? I'm curious. You know, one thing I'm thinking too is uh, with this next season is it's not that far from Mars, relatively speaking. Of course, we're talking about you know yeah. solar system size di distances here. Mm. But relatively speaking, it's not that far from Mars to the Astro asteroid, asteroid belt. belt. That's right. That's right. Right. Yeah. You know, an asteroid belt that's long been, you know, a theory, a theory that lots of resources out there free for the taking. Yep. 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 And we'll end up at the expanse. Yeah, I was oh. going to say. Uh, Earth, these Mars, shit. and the belters. <laughs> Shades of Armageddon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah in Armageddon. We'll have Armageddon. We'll, we'll get send, Bruce Willis we'll out there Bruce again. Willis up there to mine some comets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. I think that's, uh, that signals the, uh, our, the, uh, that we've come to the close of our but, uh, discussion. But one, one more. Yeah. One more small thing. I got a kick of in the 90s. They had they had the StarTac phones. They had the Motorola StarTac phones. True, true. Yeah. The old clamshell <laughs> phones. I got a kick out of that. So, Joanne, you had mentioned your uh, list of characters you like, the characters you disliked, and the characters you know what to do with. Um, yes. Do you want to share? Kind of, sure, I'll do it quickly. Um, yep. I, you already know that I liked Molly and Tracy and Gordo. I do like Danielle. She yep. is a very cerebral, you know, thoughtful woman. Yeah. And she she's a strong leader. And that's what they needed on Mars with right. somebody yep. like Molly was right. Molly yeah. was the one mm -hmm. who wanted her. And Ma Margo was the one who wanted Ed. That's right. That's right. right. And that's how Molly gets fired, because Margo. Margo says, wanted Daniel. You know, yeah. Wanted wanted Margo wanted um, Ed and Molly right. wanted Danielle. That's what so. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't stand, like I said, the two, the Ed, Kat, Ed and Karen Baldwin and Danny and Jimmy Stevens. Uh, just, yeah. it, they just, annoyed, maybe because I binge watched, they annoyed me. It was just getting worse. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how to feel about Margot. It's, she's a really complex character. Yeah. I want to see how they roll her out. Elite is another one because she's almost like a spoiled brat in a, in a, um, in a very, um, very heady body. She knows what to do, but you know, thought wise and educationally wise, but she doesn't know how to follow it up emotionally. She's hot headed. Mm -hmm. She's almost it, a stereotypical hot headed Mexican woman thing. That's a, that's a cliche, uh, you know, uh, nah. yeah, which is too it's bad. Not, yeah. It's not a great cliche. Dev's another one mm. because yes, it's the Elon Musk. It's almost like a little Steve Jobs yep, where yep. he ends up out of his own company. Is he going to come back? Is this going to be next? <laughs> Who right, knows? Right. Um, Kelly, I don't know what to do with either because she's sort of the odd one out. Yeah, she's she's smart, but she and she loves her parents. But I think she's got another identity, and with this child now, she might be. A little different. Yeah. I, I felt like Kelly came in out of nowhere in season two. Like, mm -hmm. who's this girl? You know, like mm -hmm. we've suddenly decided they need another kid. And then, yeah, with like, where is she going? Like, what is mm -hmm. she's she's this unknown quantity bouncing around that they don't know what to do with. Uh, and they said, let's give her right. a baby. And so she became right. the one who had a baby. Right. And Ellen and Larry, I, I, I want to feel for these characters. I just don't think, I think they've tried to make them bigger than what they are or tried mm -hmm. to move their story yeah. so fast that I can't, I can't get a feel for either of them. I want to like them, but then I don't want to, I don't want to not like them, but I didn't yeah, buy I don't know her what to as do presidential, uh, honestly. I didn't buy her. Me no. neither. Yeah. She's too young. They they tried to make her look older, but she's too young. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have the gravitas to be. Mm -hmm 
presidential and the whole thing like i'm gonna hop on air force one and sneak off to my you know paramour yeah. in houston yeah. like, that's not happening that's you're not no twice you're not <laughs> you're not gonna do that you're not gonna get away with that no. bill, no. bill bill clinton could have done it he would have and he didn't so yeah. right there you go as far as we know oh. well that's true <laughs> i guess if he, if he did we wouldn't know uh all right i, 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 I have to mention one character i like that you didn't you didn't mention bill strasser Oh, the Bill! Big guy. Oh, yes. him! Became, I like. I did like him. I, yeah, I, I he was a character. Like he him. was a good one. I, I mm -hmm. liked him a lot. You know, he kind of. He's one of those. He kind of grew. Um, yeah, he was. He was fun. I he's mean, he your, really was. Your pocket protector guy. Yes, and I really felt for him. Like you know that first season where, or the second season where Alita is kind of goaded into bullying him. Yeah. And I felt bad for him. And then she feels bad because she, she should. And it's like, and wow. They become best yeah. friends after yeah. that, you know. That's, yep. that's what I mean about her. She's book smart, but emotionally about 20 years behind. Yeah. 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 Um, so apparently in season four, there is, they, they've already cast the, um, the new NASA administrator. It's going to be Daniel Stern is going to be playing him. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. That'll mm. be, that's going to be good. I like him as an actor. Yeah. He was the guy in Home Alone, the tall one. Yep. <laughs> yes, that ought to be interesting. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll you know, see. He, but he, he's, he's a good actor. I mean, he's not just comedy, though. That's what he's mostly known for. Mm. But he is a good oh, actor. Oh, yeah, he is. He, he really is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I agree with most of that. I mean, I, I liked Ed more than you did. Um, I have, a, I have a, a soft spot for Joel Kinnaman anyway, I think, because he... <laughs> um, uh, as some of the other stuff he's done, I've really liked him in. So I, I kind of kind of like him in that. Um, but um, this Gordo, I really liked. Tracy was pretty cool. Bali was a blast. Um, did not like Ellen. Danielle was really mm. great. Um, Danny, I couldn't stand him. It was such a jerk. Oh, man. <laughs> I liked uh. Alita, but she was a hothead. Yeah, but I kind of liked her. Um, so, yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, Father Corey, you mentioned the Expanse. One of the producers on the show is Naren Shankar, who was one of the producers of the Expanse. So nice, <laughs> nice. And I just wonder why there's a lot of similarities and kind of imagery and so on. Right, right. And of course, you're talking space, but still, yeah. Uh, and I, I, I hate to say it, but Karen was named well. She's very much the stereotypical Karen. <laughs> she is. <laughs> I guess I feel, even in appearance, even yeah. the way they made her up yeah. with the hair and everything. I feel yeah. bad for Karens everywhere. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This yeah, has become really. my aunt's a Karen, did. and she's she's a great person. But yeah, I, 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 I get it. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you. I agree. They they made her kind of into that stereotypical uh, Karen at times. You know, and I, yeah, and I, I do agree with a lot of your your guys' thing. I, I Ed, I was kind of sometimes I liked him, sometimes I hated hated him. Uh, you yeah. know, like you said, Danny and Jimmy, you know, both of them need some smack upside the head real quick. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. you know, but a lot, a lot of the ones that you guys mentioned as well, Danielle and all those, you know, I, yeah. I kind of agree there, there are some really good characters, some really good, um, actors involved in yeah. this. And I like know, most they, of the cosmonauts, really good job. by the way, sorry, I, I interrupted yeah. you, but I like most of the cosmonauts too. They were pretty much across the board. Pretty cool. I, I, I think they, yes. they did a good job with them. And it, yeah. Yeah, I agree. especially the, the the head of the cosmonauts. You know, of course, he's he's all this is my team. You will not work with them. By the end of it, they're just cracking up. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah. just you know yeah. they they started working together, and he got to be a really likable character as well. You will not give orders to my to my crew. Uh, you give orders. You you ask me, I will give orders. <laughs> yeah. Well, but then there's the end where where, um, where uh, Danielle and him are going to do something, and they're just both laughing about it. Right. Just like she's tells someone off and then they just both start <laughs> laughing. Right, <you> know? <laughs> right, right, right. All right. I think that should do it for our discussion this time. Uh, we would, before we go, we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of movies and TV shows, including Michelle Q, George S, Aaron C, Stephen F, and James B. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of movies and TV shows and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. This is Dom Bettinelli, CEO of StarQuest. I need to ask for your help, but first I want to thank you for listening to StarQuest and supporting our mission of exploring the intersection of faith and pop culture. We've added nine new shows since 2019, including most recently, The Secrets of Middle Earth, just in time for the new Amazon streaming series. And we have plans to add even more, but the network needs additional resources. We need to bring on more audio editors, 
video editors, and production equipment, including video equipment for Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World and new shows we have in the planning stages. If you value this show and the other great shows on StarQuest, we need to hear from you now. If you're not yet one of our monthly patrons, please become one. And if you're already a patron, please consider increasing your monthly donation. There are many special patron benefits we'd like to give you, and you can learn more about them by going to sqpn.com give and clicking become a patron. Your support at this time is crucial, so please go to sqpn.com slash give today. That's sqpn.com slash give. So we'd love to hear what you thought of For All Mankind, or at least its first three seasons. You can let us know by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash secrets or at the StarQuest Facebook page. Send an email to secrets at sqpn.com or visit the StarQuest Discord community at sqpn.com slash discord. Until next time, Father Cory Stika, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of For All Mankind. Thank you, Dom. Joanne Mercier, thank you as well. Thanks, Dom. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the secrets of movies and TV shows on StarQuest. StarQuest wants to hear from you. We're conducting a survey of our audience, that's you, to help us in our planning for the future. Please take a moment and visit sqpn.com survey. We'll be selecting two participants to receive an Amazon gift card as an expression of our thanks. So visit sqpn.com survey today.